What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Thursday. You got myself, Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. What's up, man? What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Oh, yeah. This is the show where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, smash them together to make inspirational projects for you folks. Yeah. Have a lovely show for you guys <laughs> today. Every week, we start off with segments. Yeah. And I think we're going to start off with coupon code this week. Okay, this week's coupon code is very special. Wasp. That's right. What's the Wasp about? Well, like, you'll find out during the prototype segment, huh? That's right. You get 10% off all orders, all um, orders on Thursday. Except uh, gift certificates and software. Because we can't do that, but yeah. Everything else is 10% off. All things good. <laughs> Three for, printers, electronics. Got the cheapest um, printers on got the web. Got some really good deals, guys. Yes, yes, You gotta yes. check them out. Free shipping, you get a uh, Prima Proto for all, all orders over 100 bucks. And free and shipping. Free shipping. The same. On all orders over $200. $200, okay. So definitely take advantage of that. All right, well, let's start off with what's on the show. What are you prototyping? That's right, when we take a look at upcoming projects for a future episode. Oh yeah, work in progress. Then we got the layer by layer segment. That's right, it's when we take a look at some of the CAD techniques that we use to build all our projects. We love CAD, we love CAD. Next up, oh, yeah, Shop Talk. <laughs> shop Talk is when we take a look at some new things coming into the store and yeah. go over some um, little events, all sorts of things. It's just yeah. like our, our way to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll end the show off with Q&A. That's right, remember you can ask us any questions, leave them in any of the videos and we'll gather them up for a future episode. Yes, yes. All Go right. Ahead and start off with, what are you prototyping? All right, Pedro, well, what are you prototyping, man? Okay, so with Halloween fast approaching, um, we're working on a collab project with Phil B and Aaron, Aaron St. Blaine. Blaine. So we are uh, cooking up this very awesome wearable uh, wasp woman's helmet. Um, right. right at the end of Ant-Man, they showed a quick snippet of this. And That's I think right. I had like one frame to work with, so I... <laughs> you did have one frame to work with. Yeah. So here's uh, the mo the helmet model that I've been working on. Very cool. You can just lift this on like that. All right. And then I don't know how my voice is going to come out with it <laughs> coming through the <laughs> Pedro's saying he mask. doesn't know how the voice is going to come out, but we, we hope for the best. Yeah. We so. hope for the best. So this is a really cool project, Pedro. You've been working on it for a good, I think, week or so, on yeah. and off because of Maker Faire and things. Yeah. So. But yeah, maybe we should we should check out uh, some progress stuff on the Adafruit blog if you haven't already. Do you want to talk about this one? On yeah. The blog first. Okay, cool. So uh, Phil B put together a little sort of status blog thing, which is really really nice on how the process is going. Uh, let's start off with um, last I think it was last week's project, right? Last week's sort of update how the whole thing came together. It was of course inspired by Aaron. Uh, who's, who's done a couple projects with Adafruit on the Adafruit Learning System. And the blog is loading. Here's that one screenshot that, uh, that's the, probably pretty much the only screenshot that we saw in the Ant-Man movie. Yeah, so what I did here is just make a uh, vector trace out of the, the one shot there that you can see of the helmet. Sure. And I tried to figure out what the proportions were for modeling the pieces for the, for the nose and like the ears and all that around yeah. there. What made this super handy was that Phil B did a 3D scan of, oh, yeah. of Aaron. We got, a, we got a blog it. post, yeah. This is what Aaron's been doing. She's been coming up with sort of uh, the wardrobe, how, what kind of material should you use, what are the colors the scheme that it should look like. So if you, yeah, haven't if you read already, the blog post, yeah, yeah it tells you post. on, she has like a, a number of different costume changes like throughout the comic book series. Yeah, really so she's cool. trying to like combine a bunch of those together to come up with a, you know, very unique costume yeah. to go what with What are the this. most interesting uh, characters from the Avengers sort of uh, Yeah, it turns out that she Marvel. started the Avengers somehow. I don't know the whole story, but there's it's, a, there's it's a whole pretty story, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So as Pedro was saying, um, Phil B uh, did a scan of, of Aaron's head uh, using a Kinect and Skinect. Yeah, yeah. How, so, how, how, how nice, right? Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, um, back when Adafruit was a little bit smaller, we sent out a bounty for people to make drivers so yeah. we can release these for the, um, the for Connect. The Connect. Yeah. And make drivers for the Connect so you can make all sorts of different projects with it. And nowadays you can uh, pick up your Connect and get some software. It's actually free, limited to 500 polygons, but you can do some one-to-one -one scaling. Yeah, so this was really the most... Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is what we used to 
get all the proportions right to make sure that you know the nose fit over perfectly to make sure like all the ears mm -hmm. and the, like from the top of the crown and like to the bottom of the of the chin all fit uh, the proportions were all perfect for yeah. fitting the helmet on. Yeah, so physical actually measuring from here to here, like you said, and then just measuring it in CAD. So you actually brought it into Maya yeah. and did a couple measurements and things to make sure everything worked out. So then you brought it into Fusion and then started going to town on the on the on the CADing. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, cool stuff going on on this project. And um, do you want to talk a little bit about how you? Uh, Printed the whole thing as a one piece, then you cut it up, and then you figured, I want to... Yeah, so the original design required a bunch of support materials on the bottom for, like, the little piece here for the top of the, of the like, the little arc for the, for the eyes. Okay. So what I did was cut up into three pieces, so it's a little bit more manageable when doing all the printing, because right um, this is going to take you about, like, uh, uh, I think we like, like we lost 30 hours 30 or something hours like or so, that, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, quite a large print to do. So right. if you chop it up, you have it more manageable. I think like the top and the bottom take about seven, eight hours, and like the middle piece takes about uh, I think like twenty hours to do. So um, quite a while and Which no support printers? materials. Like so we had the uh, the Ultimaker two and the Type A machine tag team this one. Okay. And uh, so you printed the top here on the Type A machine and the bottom. And the bigger and the oh yeah, and the bottom. Yeah. And then uh, this bigger area, it, it needed a little bit more than 250, I think it is, mm -hmm. on the build volume. It yeah. So unfortunately, yeah, you're gonna need something a little bit more bigger, yeah, like so the Type A machines. I think it'll fit on the printer bot uh, plus as right, well. Right. Because it's 10 by 10. By 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, future project coming up. I'll uh, get all of the, of course, this is, we're going to release all of the source files so you can yeah. measure this to your head. And um, working with Autodesk, we're going to be oh, able yeah, to do Taylor some. Taylor Steen, who, who, uh, who would like to sort of make it so it's parametric so that you can um, adjust it and things yeah, like Yeah, we're going to make like little sliders so you can like adjust like the, the size of like the back of the head to wow. the nose. So it's pretty much uh, okay. one of the biggest changes that you're going to be able to, to have this be um, universal and um, so parametric so you could fit a large amount of people's uh, sizes. Let's tell people what was probably the most challenging thing, or really any, the, the most challenging thing for printing big prints. You can actually kind of see it here, right? You oh, see yeah, this little yeah, gap yeah. here, folks? So because I had, to, I had to increase the speed of this, um, I had to lower down the retraction rate of that. Okay. And uh, oh, and another the thing spool too. The is, spool is key right here, guys. Yeah, so the spool, when you have a fresh new spool, it has a tendency, the filament has a tendency to go over the wall of the spool and sort of make all a little rat's nest. And yeah. it's a rat's nest, and you're all like, oh, you're fidgeting the fixing. We have it uh, hooked up to that pole there, right? Mm -hmm. So what did you do to, to sort of alleviate that? Uh, we didn't have any footage of that, but it sort of, sort of uh, took some solid core wire and wrapped it in such a way so the filament doesn't go over uh, the wall. That's right. So. so it only has one place to guide through, and it can't sort of come off the edges, the, the little guards yeah. of the filament spool. So that's, yeah, um, it can get tied in a knot, and you get this, this little thing, and you, yeah. and you lose a lot of hours. So it's really essential that you have a fresh spool, and your spool is, is nice and, and, and in place. Um, so we'll be covering this more in the coming weeks, but this is what we got so far. Aaron's already working on like, the whole full dress and yeah. the, the whole costume, and of course, uh, the wings that go up. So very cool. Yeah. Um, Next week, I want to. We, we should show people the the update where you're doing like a mesh thing for here. There's yeah, already yeah. been some details. You can see there's no details yeah, here. Yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, yeah. you probably already seen what the mesh uh, for the eyes look like. Sure. Um, this is some of the more of the details that we've been adding, like the honeycomb shape to the ears and a little the, mohawk type thing. The, oh yeah, the mohawk, mohawk too. That's really cool. And of course, if you feature. look on the inside, everything's no all nicely supports. shelled out. There's no supports. Out. Yeah, there's no support. How you have, did like, you do that? You have room for all of the electronics to fit into like the nose, the the ears, and the mohawk. So lots of space to put all of the electronic goodies inside of there. Yeah. Very awesome. Tell us how you connected the parts together. Okay, so the parts are all connected using these uh, skinny sticks, which yeah. uh, I think you've seen us use you've before, like on the, before, on, on the, the sword. shield, on the gun blade, on Link's shield. This is definitely this the best, the way, best to, way to yeah. hook things up because you don't lose a lot of the um, uh, the material on right. on the inside. So and it helps line everything up if you're going to glue them all together. It yeah. lines everything up nicely. So very very cool. Um, good tip there if you want to put things together instead of doing that sort of jigsaw thing that I've seen people do. Yeah, this makes it so it's nice and sort of seamless. Seamless. Yeah. So, so if you want to look out cool. for this cool giant printable wearable project.
That's so cool. Coming soon. Uh, I wish I could roll the video of you scaring Gavin. <laughs> That's super fun. <laughs> OK, well, that is what Paige has been prototyping. Very cool project. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, I guess we'll jump into the layer by layer segment. Yeah, cool? so this week we're going to continue with the very awesome Bluetooth controlled uh, motorized camera slider. And that's really this week's project too. We have uh, the build video this week where we uh, take some time to talk about what parts we used, how to put it together. Real nice. Okay, so this is the design in Fusion 360. Just want to remind everybody that it is available to download. You guys can actually open it in SolidWorks or on shape or any any other CAD package that supports. There's so many different formats out there, and the cool thing is that Fusion lets you download them all. So be sure to check that out. You even get a nice sort of embed thing where you can like explode it and see all the parts. But in this particular case, I just want to take a look at one part and really talk about um, how it saved me and <laughs> like it saved my ass and how uh, and figuring out uh, the tensioning for the timing belt. So the, coming up with the tensioning of the belt was a little bit tricky because uh, we didn't actually model it. We didn't make it. That's the only thing that we didn't make. Although we could have, um, it, was a, it was a nice test to see um, if we could do it right. You said about so, the belt, right? Yeah, the timing belt. That's the thing that pushes uh, the, the slider platform across the, the rail. Mm -hmm. So this part here is the bearing mount. And basically, it's just uh, a little mount that gets uh, fastened to the little foot. And on, on, in the center of it, it's this little cylinder, and that's acting as an axle for a skate bearing, the little radio bearing that moves around. It's, it's, it acts as the, the pulley idler. And to keep that pulley in place, we have this guard, this wall, that has two lips, one at the bottom and one at the top. So there's a couple different features in there, right? Let me take a closer look at it so you can see all the features in there. So it's an axle. It, it has a, a, another sort of offsetted uh, little platform thing where you can't push the, the, um, the skate bearing all the way down. So that's what that little that, uh, ledge is there. And then there's a chamfer on the bottom. So there's a bunch of features and things there. So if I wanted to adjust the tensioning of the belt, I could do it a couple ways. I could move that whole set of things over, or I could move the whole, th the whole mount itself. But the way I designed it was w uh, where I'm using one sketch to make all of the extrudes. So the axle, the guard, the lip, all that stuff is done through this one sketch. So if you look on the side here, and I double click on it, I'm in edit mode so I can edit and see all the dimensions that are tied to it. So if you look here, I have a bunch of these circles. And the circles are all driven, they're all offsetted by one original circle. And that's the main one in the center there. And when you make that one thing, and then you start offsetting it, you're creating relationships to it so that when you move it once, all of that stuff is going to get carried over with it. So I added a sketch dimension here. It's just one of them. And it's the distance between the edge of, of that part to the center of the, of the circle. So watch what happens. Like If I wanted to move all of those pieces, all I would have to do is double click on that, um, on that, uh, that value and then just change it. Right now it's set to 14.5. I'll change it to like 15 or something more dramatic, like 18, I think I do, or 20, something like that. And you can see all of those things that were offsetted, all those circles just move as a group, as if it were a group. So what's cool about that is when I hit uh, stop sketch at the top there, it'll actually update all of the extrudes, all of the features like the chamfers and things, all of that gets updated, saving me a bunch of time. If I had made this with primitives, I would have had to remake the whole thing. And to be honest, I did remake the whole thing like two or three times because I had to build it in a, in a way where I knew where I wanted to have, uh, where I wanted to be parametric, adjustable. So that's what's cool. I'll change it back over to 14.5 because that was like the magic number there that made the tensioning not too tight, not too loose, so that it, it glides across the, um, the slider. So that is my tip. Um, me and Tyler, uh, we're going to be doing. Uh, sorry, me and Taylor, <laughs> we're going to be doing a couple of uh, tutorials um, on this project. So, if you guys have anything specific on what we, on what you want to see, please let us know in the comments, and we'll try to formulate some things. But um, yeah, we have some th cool uh, things in the works. Um, sketch, sketch dimensions really saved my butt in this project, and um, yeah, the takeaway is pretty much that. Sometimes you have to uh, mock stuff up. And, and sort of make it with primitives, and then when you're done, 
remake it with sketches in mind so that you can adjust it later. Yeah. So I think one of the legit. coolest analogies in this would be like with web design, you're uh, editing margins and padding, yeah. everything that moves with that, the yeah. padding that would uh, update that dynamically. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what's cool about uh, Fusion 360, and I'm sure you can do it in other programs and things, but you got to think of that way. So yeah. Regarding some of the, uh, the, the some of the things you guys were talking about was maybe having like a radial button will, oh, where wow. it would yeah. like adjust like depending on what printer that you're using. So if you're using like a MakerBot or um, uh, an Ultimaker, you can adjust oh, yeah. the different tolerances for that, and it would just we because we're able to test them out here. We're able to know what, you know is it 0.2 or 0.1 a, a difference for the tolerance. That's for right. That. So making a custom interface within Fusion 360 that will uh, take your, your values from your uh, sketch uh, dimension and be able to change it with just a slider. And another analogy for that would be like inside of Maya where you have like blend shapes where oh, you have, yeah. you're able to make your custom little sliders that'll right. adjust just custom sliders. certain parameters on that. And that's I'll, what we were talking what? about I'll with, link the, that with the below. Mask. Sorry, I'll link that below because Taylor did a great tutorial already on that. Just so you need to check it out. Um, and yeah, that's what we'll start doing. Another one is he showed us the enabled um, fingers. fingers yes. That is the best like use case of it. So you can adjust fingers finger and sizes and yeah, all finger that, sizes. Yeah. So, yeah, good stuff there, folks. That was our layer by layer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, let us know in the comments what you want to see on this project. We'll be trying to work on some more uh, individual tutorials with that. Right. Okay. Next up. Yeah. We next have up, we're gonna do some shop, talk. shop talk. Shop talk. That's right. So Halloween is upon us. It is now October something. <laughs> Early October, so you guys need to get on that. Yeah, October 8th. Um, so let's take a look at our contest, the Instructables contest that we're, that we're sponsoring, uh, Adafruit sponsoring. This is the Halloween prop contest. Uh, now 106 people have entered, and it has 34 days left. There's still 21 prizes, and there is a lot of cool stuff, folks. Get on this. This is really cool. This is one of our favorite ones right now. We love the anime Soul Eater. That was a really cool one. So there's and a really cool site that you can build. And yeah. Build Makachan Salt so or Scythe. Let's be pretty clear, because I sent my friends, uh, like, hey, who, who makes cosplay stuff, like, hey, you should check this out. And I didn't hear back from it. And I think I know why, because in order to enter this contest, folks, you have to make a tutorial. You have to document your yeah, project. So all, you the, all the photos that you were just scrolling through there, when you click on them, it'll take you to Instructables and it'll show you the step-by-step -step instructions on That's right. all the build instructions for that. So that it's not right. just a little pretty thumbnail. No, it is the recipe, the secret sauce in how to, on how to cook this up. That is really cool. I really love Instructables because folks, you've got to get into the, into the sort of habit Mindset of, of yeah. documentation. And here's why a lot of people don't document. It is hard. It makes your build double the time. We have to it build our projects like fun. almost you know, Two four times. times, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But when you do it, man, when you come back to it, you'll be so happy that you did because when you make a lot of projects, a lot of the, the secret sauce gets lost. You, rest, you don't know what you did. A lot of the little, the little tiny settings that make the whole project work are you know, thankfully saved somewhere. So yeah. this is why you always do documentation. So take photos. You know, They don't have to be great photos, but take some sort of photos. Do the steps that really make you go, oh my god, I learned something. Let me take a photo of that. Let me take a note of that. And that's what every one of these entries have done. This is a big deal, folks. Even if you don't win, it is awesome that you, you're getting into the habit of documentation. A lot of programmers don't like to do it. A lot of designers don't like to do it. It is really important. <laughs> we have our jobs here because we document stuff. And yeah. that is a, that's key, guys, to making projects, is to document them. Another oh, the cool one is the Sims Diamond DIY. We actually saw this at Maker Faire. There's like two, two dudes. But I'm sure they that. used her uh, tutorial on how to make it, which is awesome. So, yeah, so again, overall, definitely stuff. check it out. Enter in. There's a lot of really cool prizes down here. We're sponsoring a lot of the uh, prizes like the printer, uh, printer bot, and Lady Ada's uh, electronic uh, kit. Yeah, the tool kit. There's, of course, also a camera. Samsung stepped in and said, hey, you should take better pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so definitely. Don't forget to check that out. Enter in. Oh yeah, it's going on. Just Make a tutorial. <laughs> I know it's a hard, it's a hard thing to enter, but you know, I think it'll drive people to make tutorials. So that's yeah. really cool. All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next uh, shop talk segment. We have a new printer in the shop. We've Ooh, been talking we about this printer. Have. It's this one here. Flash the Forge. Flash Forge Creative Pro. It finally came in, in stock, stock last week. We had five on stock. We're down to two. They're probably sold out by the time of this recording. I'm not sure. Yeah. But it is a really good deal. It's $12.99 right now. That's sticker price. Smart people don't pay sticker price. 
You get 10% off free shipping if you order it from Adafruit on a Thursday or Wednesday. Yeah, don't forget coupon code for this week. Oh. Wasp. Yeah. Let me let me do that. Let me do that. Sorry, folks. Wasp. <laughs> there it is. 10% off. Four letter word. I wonder why it's wasp. But um, yeah. <laughs> let me go back to the. Was it this one? I'm serious, it was this one. Bear with me, folks. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're talking about the Flash Forge. We've easily put maybe 100 or 200 hours of printing into it. I printed all of my I parts. I think you're lowballing it there, a lot of the parts. A thousand <laughs> hours, <laughs> folks. We print. put in a lot of hours into so this So see, like printer. the Ninja Flex, uh, dual extruded Ninja Flex oh um, my goodness. unicorn. We did uh, that a take, lot uh, of quite stuff. Quite a while. It so that is, when doing the experimentation for so Fire that, and all the settings. That's why. Um, we were we we weren't too surprised when we saw this. What is this? Yeah. So oh, no. Um, a couple. Yeah. Over the weekend, like Pedro was like, "Oh man." Yeah. So over the weekend, we got this error, and we we're like, "Oh no, what, what's wrong?" So the so it says tool one failure. Temperature is dropping. Check wiring. So um, you've been seeing that there's some little weird things, like the LEDs have been flickering, and the temperature has been dropping. It hasn't been consistent at 230. It'll drop down to like 207. We thought it was because the, act, the active cooling fan was a little too high or something. So we got this error. We Googled it. That's the first thing you should do is Google it, see what other people are doing. And it turns out that it could be uh, uh, your thermocouple. That could be wrong. It could be the wiring is loose. Different couple things. So it, you're, you're, you're good to know, happy to know that there are some replacement parts that it comes with. It comes with the fuse and some wires and things. And they're actually responsive. Uh, their support team is responsive and they'll send you parts and stuff so they're readily available. Um, so we just brought them out just to be like, okay, we got these ready. So let's take it apart. So the first thing is to, to take a look at it. We took off the fan. It comes with tools to take it apart, which is really, really easy. All the things look fine. There weren't any leaky stuff going on. Everything looked okay. So what we did, we flipped it over on its side. Take a look here. The back, the panel easily comes off. It's just a couple screws. And then you can see everything in here. All the wiring is labeled. So it's got a really nice uh, setup here. You can see the, the heated bed. And we, we, here we are. We're testing out if the, if the cable's loose or anything. And it wasn't. Everything looked fine. Nothing smelt burnt. Nothing looked burnt. So took a look at the back here. And if you look at the back, um, where you actually plug in the thing, check a look at this white, this yellow sticker here. Yeah, nice big blaring attention. attention. <laughs> Please adjust the voltage before usage. Yeah, so I had assumed that the, it was already set to the correct voltage here in the US. We're using 115 volts. Um, but this is why they have that sticker up there. You know how we are. We don't really read the manuals. Don't read the manual. Just <laughs> go right in and plug it in. It's ready to go. It's yeah. been printing for 1,000 hours and, it, and no problems, right? Yeah. Well, we think that was, that was what our problem was. So, of course, it's manufactured in China. You know, it, it's getting shipped to Australia. It's getting shipped to they Asia, global everywhere. Distribution, so it's everywhere, yeah. So you definitely got, got to check this when you get... This is one of the first things you got to do when you get your new uh, printer in. We did uh, look at the PDF manual online, and it was like, please adjust this. If you're, if you're in the States, you should probably be on a... a, a so a thankfully, this was a very easy fix. Yeah. Nothing, you know, the, the motherboard survived just fine. Oh Everything's God. perfect. So, so what you got to do is just turn it on its side, take off the back covering and here you can see that's the little switch and it's set to 230 volts so yeah. what you do is just take a make sure you're unplugged obviously and take a flathead and just click just, the switch click down it, yeah. 215 volts and you should be good to go no more of the crazy looking um, led yeah. flickering the the uh when the active cooling fan turns on it, it stays constant maintains, and maintains the temperature uh, another quick thing is that if you take off the front bezel uh, you can see that there's a protective film over the LCD, so you can take that off too, and it made things yeah, it's look a little, a little bit more longer. Yeah, yeah, so it's not it doesn't have like a little yellow pull tab where right. you can easily take that off. So, so we're super amazed. That just really shows that this printer is well built. We were running this thing for a thousand hours on the wrong voltage. <laughs> People make mistakes. We're making these mistakes, so you don't have to. So if you do have the FlashForge printer and you haven't done this, please stop what you're doing and do it now. Right? <laughs> I yes. guess. So uh, ever since then, uh, we've been having some really consistent lighting. The LED's not flickering anymore. Like you were saying, the temperature's constant on the extruder. I can't believe this thing did not, like the, the motherboard mother did not die, blow. Yeah. So we're very lucky, and this is a really good printer. So if you want to pick up the printer, <laughs> WASP is the coupon code. You can get 10% off in free shipping.
shipping, and I think you'll get a free promo code of board as well. <laughs> yeah, for your troubles. OK, so that was the Flash Forge Creator Pro segment. Again, yes, uh, we did take off the front covering. And oh, yeah. We didn't even add the, the enclosure. We, we haven't even, yeah, we haven't added it yet. We, we, we haven't been printing a lot of ABS or high t temperature, but right. um, amazing price it. that it comes with all of this. Uh, Ninja Flex right out of the box. Oh, yeah, heated bed. I keep saying heated bed, man. That's perfect. Beautiful print. Enclosure. You can print at 90, 150, and everything looks just amazing. Nice and fast. Um, of course, you're not going to be able to print like ginormous prints like the, the helmet, but everything else you can sort of, you know, sort of glue together, make a bigger print. Sure, you can cut it up and things, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's a really good printer. Can't say enough good things about it. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look at this week's Q and A. Um, is that is that really it? Okay. Let's go to the Q and A. I don't have anything else I can say about it. I had something else I don't remember. Ninja Flux, heated bed. Um, yeah. Should we do a review video? Do you guys want to see a review video on this thing? Uh, Let us know in the comments. Yeah, we pretty much already did like the down. dual extrusion really video for it that's linked in the product page. But right. yeah, we can do a more full review on it. OK. Uh, oh, definitely check out the uh, GitHub for all the pr printing oh, profiles. You. You that was one of them. So you can get all it took a little while to get all the numbers right for doing yeah. like dual extrusion with um, NinjaFlex mm -hmm. and um, getting all like the the U shield uh, settings all right, so right. definitely check that out. Definitely recommend Simplify 3D as the slicer. It is an open source printer. It's running on uh, Sailfish, which is open source firmware. firmware. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's yeah, pretty yeah. much it. So yeah. check it out, guys. Okay, let's let's move on to the questions. We might be going overboard here. So these are the YouTube questions. Let me pull up the um, questions here. Bear with me for a second. Here we go. First question is from Matt Coleman. So could you do this with a lightning cable for an iPhone or a micro USB for a portable Raspberry Pi and PSU? This is on the Chargito project. And yeah, this, this is like the Minty Boost. This thing's going to work with all sorts of USB devices, not just the iPhone or the iWatch. Yeah, I just wanted to make it all fancy because of the release of the iWatch. Right. You get that it, good Google juices. Well, sure. It's, this it's, works with any type of USB. Yeah, and also, if you if you don't want the, the Apple Watch charger, the conductive charger thing, take a look at um, the Printy Boost. The Printy Boost is, is a good project, too, from Chris Young, Yeah, which is pretty much the same thing, but just um, just singled out for the, uh, for the power Wireless boost. charger, yeah. Yeah, so check that out. Thank you for the, for the question, Matt. OK, next one is from Joseph. He's asking how much to make a cool mask if I wanted one. Oh, that's one Let's of the things we about. did not or talk about. That's why that. we did it, because this is the question for yeah, us. Yeah, so this, uh, the material, material cost. Okay. It costs about 15 okay, so 10 15 bucks. It really material. depends on what your filament spool is. If your filament is like high quality, it costs like 40 to 50 bucks. It costs 15 bucks. You could print four of them. Yeah. It's only, what, uh, 346 grams in mm -hmm. weight. So if you do the math, you get 1,000 grams in one kilogram. Uh, you get about three or four uh, things on a fresh spool. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. And if you're, uh, if you're getting filament that's like 30 bucks um, from like Hatchbox or Micro Center or wherever, um, it's like, it's like uh, 10 bucks, I think, in material, which is relatively cheap. So yeah. Yeah, the most time consuming part about this is going to be <laughs> how long it takes of to course, print. Yeah. But yeah, it's relatively cheap in terms of material, material costs. costs. OK. Well, thank you for the question. Next up, this one's from Max Bloom. What is the stand they have at 13 seconds on the Kippa Pi, the, um, the portable Kippa Pi project? Yeah. Well, we can't really show you this. The camera is actually attached to this right now, but you can pull up. It's called the OnStage Telescoping Microphone. Oh, yeah, that's right. And this is super sturdy uh, microphone stand. I think we've had this for like almost 15 oh, years now. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> I've had this thing since like 2001. Yeah, this was my first mic stand. It is, of course, uh, from On Stage. You can get it from Amazon or Musicians Friends. It's only like 25 bucks. I really like it. Also, I made uh, this little guy, which is uh, sort of a adjustable I think adapter. It's like a five eighths to three eighths. Uh, for a quarter twenty. To a quarter twenty. There's yeah. like there's a lot three of different. Yeah. yeah. I actually don't know what the screw, uh, the screw threading is. Somebody asked me like, hey, what's the screw threading? I don't know. <laughs> I just I could measure it or whatever. So let me know if you want. But anyway, that is one cool thing there. Um, this is a project that we did a little bit ago. I thought I'd share it on Thingiverse. We didn't do a video or anything about it, so that's why I'm sharing it now. So 
Yeah, I love this mic. It's, it's like, like Pedro said, it's up there. We use it all the time. Yeah, like so every, every yeah, what you're showing there is how we're using it right. to connect to the little wet, uh, little camera, the, the overhead cam that yeah. they have there. At the time, we weren't using it for a camera. We were using it for a microphone. And the, and the, the, uh, the microphone has a, a tripod uh, oh, that's quarter right, 20, right, yeah. so that's why. But there it is. That's the ons I'll put a link to it in the, in the description below so you guys can check it out. But let's jump back into the questions. I think it's this one here, over here. That was a good question. And it's back over here. Thank you for the question, Max Bloom. Next up, this one is from Grace Taylor. Will a standard Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance work if I use the casing and components instead of trying to get a 3D printed case? Yeah, you're just going to take uh, Dremel and a lot of hot glue maybe to, maybe, yeah. to drill out all the parts Will that everything make everything fit? fit. I hope so. We haven't really tried it. It is a thing to, to sort of take a case and retrofit it. Um, but I, you know, this is we, where 3D printing shines. Right. You can move we, all your stand outs exactly where they fit. Exactly, we designed it exactly for these components. So, I would recommend getting the 3D printed case if you don't know where to get it from or you don't have a 3D printer. 3DHubs.com. Get your local maker to print it for you and send it and ship it for some monies. Yep. You support go. your makers. Thank you for the question, though, uh, Grace. Okay, next one is from Trey. Where do you normally buy your ABS and PLA filament? Yeah, so one of the perks of working at Adafruit is we get all the parts for free. So um, if you ever got one of the spools, we, yeah. we don't, we do not remove where we actually get this from, which is from Ultimachine. That's right. So very good, high quality there. Yeah. Uh, not the cheapest, but definitely saves your butt when you need a high quality prints. And um, I recommend checking out other filaments too, like Hatchbox is a cheap one. Your Micro Center maybe has some. And check with your local, um, your local directory. You, we actually have a manufacturer here in West Palm Beach called B3D, and they, they do like $29.99 for, for a kilogram. Yeah. It's high quality stuff, so check it out, folks. Good question, good question. A lot of filament manufacturers these days. Oh, also ColorFab. We get stuff from ColorFab, like yeah. the metal stuff. Ninja Flex is another one, Fender Drives. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different stuff out there. So be sure to do your research. Look on YouTube, Amazon. Yep. I've said enough. Roberto asks, what game was he playing on the iPad? Yeah, this was on the, the DIY Bluetooth. Um, what game was it, Pedro, while I pull this up? Yeah, so this was Mega Worm. Super Mega Worm. Not just Mega Worm, but Super Mega Worm. And it wasn't an iPad. It was an Android. Uh, Nexus 7, this guy right here. Yeah. It's uh, for both iOS, uh, I think for the desktop as well. It's a super fun game. I recommend it if you haven't played it yet. It's one of my favorite games. Um, very fun and, and things. Pretty addicting. And check out the project if you haven't already. This is a really fun project. That's all the parts you need to build it. It's a no program required. It's just a good uh, exercise. It's one of those cool programs yeah. that or projects that gives you a very nice end incentive. Result. Yeah, yeah, incentive to, to have a fun game. So very fun. Okay. Yeah. Next question. This guy over here. This guy over here. Clickety click. Again, thank you for the question, Roberto. Next one is from Andy Marco Weski. How does the A plus cope with the SNES and, GB and GBA emulators? I thought this was a bit too slow for them. Yeah, with the right settings though, you can overclock your Pi to make it work pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, Phil B did a great job on the on the guide um, running OpenGL games on the on the Raspberry Pi, so you can overclock it to make it a little bit more optimized, so it's not as laggy. Yeah, <laughs> so then we check out all the settings for <laughs> all the little uh, changes you got to make to your config file. That's right. That's right. All right, next one. That's the last one. <laughs> Thank you for all the questions. Of course, you can get your uh, questions in. Just drop them in the, uh, the YouTube comments, either in this video or in any other project videos particularly. We gathered them up. We usually have like five to 10 on, on a show. So please ask more questions, yeah? Yep. OK. It's going to do it for this show. Again, don't forget, we got a lovely assortment of links for you guys. That's right. Well, let's do the don't coupon code. Don't forget the coupon code. That's right. The coupon code is WASP. We'll get you 10% off your orders. Get on that. That's right. Expires at 11.59 PM tonight. Doesn't work on gift certificates or software, but you can get your lovely uh, choice of printers and electronics for your projects. OK. Well, we want to leave you off with some links, of course. Check out the Adafruit Learning System. All the team at Adafruit is always pumping out some really cool projects for you guys. Sample code, design files, 
all the secret sauce recipes to make some pretty cool projects. Check it out. It's on the Adafruit Learning System. And of course, you, need, you can follow me, Pedro, and Adafruit on Instagram. There's a lot of behind the scenes from me and Pedro, so be sure to get on that. I'll have the links uh, below as well. And we do, of course, want to share with you the whole lineup of shows from Adafruit, starting off with Becky Stern. She's live every week on Wednesday with Wearable Electronics. Um, co-hosting by a couple different people. Sometimes it's Jess from, uh, from the customer support team. Sometimes it's Phil. Sometimes it's Colin. So be sure to check it out. A lot of cool things. You can win stuff. She has a contest where you can ask a question and get prizes. That's right. So very cool stuff there from Becky. And then, sh and then after, later in that evening on Wednesdays is our show and tell. Lamar and Phil, come in and say hi. Let us know what you're working on. And uh, yeah, it's a good party. Yeah. Cool. 3 printed projects, electronic Share, show, endeavors. Make. We're always there. Come by, say hi. Tools, maker spaces, all sorts of good stuff, folks. And then immediately after that. Immediately, yeah. Uh, after Because it's a 30 minute show. After that, you get a full hour of Lamar and Phil on Ask an Engineer. You get new products, secret stuff. You get all open source, Raspberry Pi, Arduino news, and more. So that's be sure right. to check that out. Full hour of Lamar and Phil. And that's pretty much the whole lineup of shows. So that's that's it, guys. That's <laughs> we want to thank everybody for tuning in, buying yeah. stuff because we are not you know, we're not taking any loans or venture capitalists. It's all we're sponsored all by you, you guys. So. Try something once in a while. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. But until then, be sure to keep on making. See you guys. See you guys next week.